What gets me hyped about skateboarding? Everything. Everything about it, if I have to be real. My mates, just the, the vibe it brings, the, uh, the challenge of trying a trick, like keeping at it, and um, thinking I haven't got it, like the, the, whole, the whole like feeling of thinking I haven't got it, and then working at it, and then out of nowhere the trick just like works, and you're like, what? And you just kind of just go blank when you land it. Yeah, it honestly, it does, I guess it doesn't go any more than that, yeah, yeah. I'm Sean Curry and I'm from Harrow, London. Well, I came here with my family originally, uh, like my mum and my dad and my brothers. I think it was just basically getting too expensive out there and then uh, I have family out here, so yeah, we all just moved out here as a family. I started when I was eight, but it wasn't like anything serious. I have to probably say the best trick I've done in Sheffield. I don't want to beat myself up like so far is out is out in the streets at this uh, skate spot called HSBC Hip. I do like a 270 kick flip over that street hip. Definitely like super open, man. They're like, yeah, yeah. It's just like no, it's not a, one type of person who can who you'll be like have like I don't know. No one will get like fucking. Be like, oh, you're kind of like different, like, no, don't come in. It's the most open thing ever, man. Like, from what I've noticed ever since I've started skating, like, everyone is accepted and everyone can join in whenever they want, you know what I mean? Which is the cool thing, and um, that's why I'm happy I found skating, because uh, I've met all sorts of people, you know? I could count on my hands, there was like me, Lucy Adams, Jenna Selby, Kerry Varma. There was literally five, six, seven, maybe, in the whole of the UK. Um, and then by the time I came back, there was probably about 25, 30, and now there must be like 2,000, you know, 3,000. There's a lot now. Um, it's all helped, I think, a lot because of Girls Skate UK becoming an online presence and just, just kind of promoting, it doesn't matter how good you are, where you're from, just promoting female uptake. My name's Kirsty, I am from Sheffield. If you are a girl and you want to skate, you should feel confident enough to be able to just go to a park, rock up there, probably see another couple of girls, hopefully. Um, and there's a lot of more like uh, localised like crews and groups. If you want to skate in Leeds, there's rolling with the girls. There's kind of like mini crews for each area, which is really sick. Oh, this guy, yeah, you want to get an interview with get, get, get him. <laughs> I remember like first kickflip like in a shitty underground car park in Chef. Yeah. Like when they were chucking it down with rain in underground car park and then you, you land your first kickflip and you're like, oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ben Kinsella, I'm from Sheffield. Once you can skate a bit, you like start coming dev and it's like bare like weird at first, you're like, ooh. When us lot grew up, people like, Sean and Timmy and Ronnie, it were like, as they were just kind of coming out of their like prime years kind of. So I was like, I think feel like we were like influenced by like them a lot. The culture of chefs like quite different to like, like if you skate in chef, everyone knows everyone. Like you can't skate in chef and people like not know who you are. When we started skating like 15, 14, you remember when Instagram were just 15 second videos? So there were like a couple skaters, like we're literally talking a couple of men that were putting like skate clips on Instagram. And you'd watch it and you'd be like, I've never seen like nothing like that. Like skating in Chef, I've never seen anything like that. And then like, as we grew up, the level of skating like on the internet just like blew up. Now, just because it's me, it's all for me, it's for no one else, I'll go on my own, 
it's a little window of time that's just for me and I'll just fill it with skating, a bit like when I was younger. You know, you start skating and you're just doing it for pure fun. My name is Martin and I'm from Chesterfield. Just came here as kids, like we'd, we'd skate in our town and one day we just like got on a train and came to Sheffield. You know, don't, you don't tell your mum and dad where you're going, you know, and you just get on a train and went to Sheffield today, you know, probably a big deal. We were all sort of street skaters, so we'd literally come to town and skate town all day. On a Sunday, we'd be in town at like 10, 11 o'clock, skate all day, go home at like eight or nine o'clock, just skate around the whole city, because it was dead, no shops were open, so you literally had like the whole, whole city to skate. And it, You know, we never told anyone we were coming to Sheffield. We came out of the train station, the first indoor car park we saw, we went into that and just skated there and then went home. And then the next time we came, we went a little bit further. And My name's Mark Baines, uh, I'm from Worksop, which is about 20 miles from Sheffield. Probably like 93. I started coming to Sheffield and we'd skate around here. I've been skating since I was 13, so that's like 29 years. I mean, there was like here, there was the crucible. It was quite a rough surface, but it used to be a ledge on a slight slope. That was pretty good. Um, there was Hallam University, which is towards the train station. Uh, that was amazing, that spot. We used to go there all the time as well. If you didn't meet up with your gang in the morning, you weren't with anyone, or you'd spend all day looking for them, and you could miss them by minutes. and spend an entire day going to every little spot and just miss them by a minute. Whereas now, someone knows where you are constantly because you've got to put it on your Instagram story. And like, I learnt the city by like going and skating around it. Like, I lived with other students that had seen like 10% of Sheffield and had already been like, to every like not every corner there's still loads of Sheffield I haven't seen but like it takes you to all these different places and like pushes you to go into like different places and have these like different experiences and, and like that starts to be the thing that like it colours your experience. I'm Tom O'Driscoll, I'm from Norwich. For instance like I came here as a student and like just immediately started skating with the locals on dev and like I don't know my feeling coming here was that I was pretty much immediately welcome. It was like I'd come to Dev um, and I was like on my own and I'd maybe lived, lived here like a week and been putting off skating. I came on and like walked up and then like Will was there and he said hello. Back home you didn't like say hello to people <laughs> at the skate park, like people weren't friendly at all. We're at the house skate. Oh, you all right? We're at the house skate park in Sheffield for the 2007 house com. <laughs> the
the amount of times that people come down for the first time, how long have you been here? Oh, 23 years, and they'll be like, what? How do I not know about you? My name is Rob Bannister. Um, I run the house skate park in Sheffield. Uh, I started skating when I was about seven years old. I started coming to Sheffield probably about 91-ish, 1991, probably 13, 14. Um, and the Sheffield scene was about 30 odd people at that point. There was no outdoor facilities. Our closest mini ramp was in Mansfield and it was bloody awful. And we'd drive there weekly because it was the only thing we could do as a ramp. And this place opened in 98. Um, prior to this, we had three DIY spots, um, which were just kind of derelict buildings we took over, knocked some stuff up and skated them. Um, we got bored of losing them and I got bored of working for other people. Everything in this building was made by myself and the other skaters that work here. I kind of see myself like an accidental capitalist. We, we try and do it by only charging as much as we absolutely have to to cover the bills and then try and do as much as we can within, out of here and in here in terms of community stuff. This is, I mean, I, I don't really think I can overstate what impact skate once had in my life because everything I am and do is what it is these days. Wife, kids, house, this place, everything I do. It's, yeah, it's been a weird, weird old journey. I didn't really know about many girls skateboarders back then. It wasn't until maybe 10, 12 years ago that I started finding out about other girls skateboarders and that's when I started, you know, taking it a bit more seriously, I guess. Uh, Danielle Gallagher um, and I'm from Kent. I live in Sheffield. Luckily, Rob built me this ramp for when the skate park's closed just so I had somewhere to go and skate. Um, so this, this wasn't meant for workshops or anything, this was just for me. I just had lots of girls on my wait list like, wanting to come to this retreat that I had and I just thought, oh, you know what, I can just open up my private mini ramp. It's so much easier to teach, you know, in somewhere like this than a skate park. I haven't got to worry about scooter kids or other people getting in the way or you getting in other people's way, you know, I can just teach here and I know that it's a safe space, you know, it's private. The girls and the women really feed off of that. They really feed off being able to come here and not have eyes on them and, you know, this is a totally judgmental space. I've met all my friends through skateboarding, I've travelled the world through skateboarding, I've learnt so much through skateboarding. It's everything to me. Maybe I sat here, probably doing the same thing on the day the skate park opened. If Dev Green got swallowed, if it wasn't there, like, there would be this massive void. I feel like there'd be a pretty massive chunk missing. Your expectations is like up here. I don't have your expectations. That's fine.